Emma Sloan was a believer in a great many things, most of which were entirely fallacious. Emma Sloan, an innocent victim of his dark half, more collateral damage in the ongoing war, damned by forces beyond her control as much as by her emotions. My own face peered back at me from the TV screen. For a moment, I struggled with the sensation of deja vu. How many times have I seen myself like this now? And then there was that easy grin that never seemed quite as quick or natural on my own lips. The dark, malicious twinkle in the eyes. And I knew who I was looking at. As he pulled back and revealed the room behind him, my throat went dry. There was nothing I could do but watch. Michael Farabee, dead, tortured, dressed in clothes that bore the name of a local observatory. A slim lead, but solid enough. It stirs something deep in his mind. He knows where to go now. I guess that'll have to be my next stop. Observatory, hot on the heels of the Herald of Darkness, the Champion of Light forges on to see the stars. An observatory. A place for a man to witness the magnificence of the universe. But such insights are not what the Champion of Light is looking for. He has come to find a weapon.
As a storyteller, my first real love was crime. And it was in that genre that I finished my first novel, starring the perpetually miserable Alex Casey, whose entire life was a wound that never healed. The books sold as fast as they hit the shelves. I wrote five more Alex Casey books, and they all were bestsellers. I became rich. I became famous. Success brought pressure, and I didn't handle it very well. Welcome back, listeners. As you know, I'm Eddie Rodman, and I'm still talking to old gods of Asgard who are doing their big comeback tour. How's that been going for you? Odin? Splendid! I'm having the time of my life! You know, I didn't realize how much I'd miss that. And what about you, Tor? Ah, it's okay, you know. Well, this must bring back a lot of memories. Oh, yeah! It's wonderful to be back on stage. If it wasn't for my knee, <laughs> I'd feel like a young man again. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I hate to keep harping on this age thing, but I gotta tell you, I've heard your new songs, guys, and you sound really good. Thank you. And uh, this may be a touchy subject, but to be blunt, you really don't sound, uh, well, old. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, the difference between your, your speaking voice and your singing voice, it's pretty striking. What the hell are you talking about? You saying it's not us singing on that record? What? What you talking about? No, 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 I'm not saying that, guys, but I, I can't help noticing the difference. Son, you're on thin ice. You calling me a liar? Oh, hey, let me just step in here for a moment, boys. Yeah, Eddie, they do sound different, but believe me, we're not talking Milli Vanilli here. These guys are the real deal. Why don't you come to the gig tomorrow night and see for yourself? Once they get on that stage, Boom! Things get real. Really? Believe me, they play like they're possessed. It's almost like magic. Look, you see my boys play, you see the old gods for real. These guys project a lot of power. They're not lightweights, you know what I'm saying? All right, Barry, I'll, I'll see if I can make it. Now, let's take another quick break here, and after that, we'll play the new Old Gods of Asgard single. Don't you go away. I've carried a flashlight and a gun for so long that I feel naked without either. It's all too often that I need them. The darkness protects the taken. Shadows crawl over their forms like living things, protecting them from harm. Blows that would injure or kill a human outright mean nothing to them as long as the darkness persists. But light makes them vulnerable. Light burns the shadows away. The darkness that drives them is still in them, but now they're vulnerable. Flashlight and gun. Sometimes it feels they're all I have left.
The pressure of success got to me. My wife, Alice, was the sole thing in my life that anchored me. Suddenly, it wasn't enough. I couldn't write anymore. I distracted myself with wild parties and whatever trouble I could scare up. I wallowed in the drama of my life, sure that Alice would stick with me even though she didn't sign up to be the lifeline of a tortured artist. It was my dumb luck she's not the type to give up. I've seen the enemy, and it's me. I faced dark horrors before, things that live in the unimaginable pressures of the world beyond our own. Sometimes they masquerade as humans. That's what ultimately lurks inside Mr. S He's every mean-spirited tabloid story about me, an evil caricature, a creature formed in that vague territory of misconceptions, half-truths, and the dark imagination of people who heard a story about me. An urban legend made flesh, a serial killer, my dark half, brought to life by the power of Cauldron Lake. <laughs> 